I'm going to show you the colors I use in my terminal and in Vim. And I'll show you how to set things up like I have them set up and why I think it's a good idea to change from the default colors. Now, first, we're looking at the default colors in my, uh, in my terminal. I'll go into my code directory here. You can see uh, very little color. And if I jump into my PHP calculator here, open it up with Vim. So now here I do have some syntax highlighting. I have colors, but it's pretty hard to look at, uh, especially if you're looking at code like this for most of the day like I am. All right, so I'm going to start off by showing you how to uh, get your Vim looking uh, a lot nicer. So the theme I use is uh, Vim Nightfly. Uh, Nightfly is based on Night Owl, uh, which is a popular VS Code theme by Sarah Drasner. And uh, I really like this theme. This is what it looks like in Ruby. JavaScript, of course. And uh, it has support for a bunch of other languages as well. Okay, so to install it, I need to edit my uh, NeoVim config. So for me, that's in Vim config and Vim init. Uh, I'm sure that if you're using Vim, you've uh, updated your RC or init config before, so you know how to do that. I'm using a uh, plugin manager called Vimplug. So all I need to do is add a new plugin called Night Vim Nightfly GUI Colors. So I'll do that. Um, and then I need to also make sure that I am using the color scheme. So I have to set the color scheme below as well. All right, let me exit out of there, go back in. Perfect. Okay, let's go back to that calculator from before. That's looking a lot better already. The reason I like this color scheme is because every color is actually fairly distinct. They don't all blend into each other, but there's not a lot of contrast, so it doesn't hurt my eyes looking at it for four or five hours a day. Just scanning the screen is pretty obvious to me what's a declaration, what is text, what's, a, what's an object, what's a method or a property, uh, what's a language built in. And I find that pretty useful jumping from language to language, file to file. Uh, it makes it pretty easy for me to figure out what everything is, and it doesn't hurt my eyes. But a huge pet peeve of mine is when my terminal doesn't match my Vim color scheme. So right now my terminal looks like this, and then I go into Vim, and it looks like that. I always want them to be exactly the same. I want them to be consistent. Fortunately, Nightfly has a color theme for Kitty set up for you. Kitty is the terminal that I use. So if I uh, click right into here, I can get all the colors that I need for a Kitty, so my terminal will match my Vim theme. Uh, so let's modify my Kitty. And you can see that I just commented these out earlier. Perfect, now my terminal looks great. And if I go take a look at that uh, calculator, it still looks great too. So my terminal and Vim match up perfectly. That's half the battle. A lot of people stop when they change their Vim color theme and their terminal color theme, but I think you can go a little bit further and get some pretty nice results. So I'm in my code directory right now. If I do an LS or an LL, you'll see all the results are the exact same color. But I wanna show you how much better it can be if you actually add some color to this. So I'm going to use a command called LSD, uh, LSD ALH. And you can see I have a lot more color now from my LS. So I get a little icon saying that this is a directory. I can see that um, it's really clear to me, okay, where the directory is, where the uh, timestamp is, the size, everything is split up nicely into a different color. And in fact, the uh, timestamps, the very bright ones means that they've been edited recently. Um, the less bright ones have been edited longer ago. LSD is available on GitHub. Uh, so if you're using uh, Arch, you can install it through Arch. If you're on a Mac, you can install it using Homebrew. And then uh, what I've done is I've actually in my um, ZSH file, ZSHRC, I alias ls uh, to LSD. So now if I go back in my code directory, great, ls uh, is replaced by LSD. Now if I ever really need to use ls for some reason, I can do backslash ls and that's going to use, it's going to ignore the alias. I can't really ever think of a time I'd want to do that, but the option's always there. Okay, so my terminal looks great, ls looks great. If I jump into my calculator and open it up, it looks great in Vim. 
But there's one more command that you can add color to, which I think makes a really big difference. So that command is cat. So if I use cat right now on the calculator, you can see that uh, it all comes back as one color and that makes it pretty hard to read. This is PHP. So I actually just catting it out. I can't really tell what's happening here. So I'd actually have to open it up in Vim to get an idea. But there's a replacement for cat called bat. So if I do bat calculator, Look at this. So I, I now have the file um, batted out instead of catted out, batted out. Uh, it adds syntax highlighting depending on the type of file. Uh, you'll notice this is not the same as my Vim theme. Uh, it does its own syntax highlighting and it pipes it into less so that I can scroll up and down. It doesn't just take over my whole screen. Bat works on a variety of files. If I were to bat uh, this file right here, still password.sh, it knows it's a shell file. Uh, shell script rather, so it can do syntax highlighting uh, and give me the line numbers um, and compare that to cat. I think that it's pretty obvious that bat is a lot nicer looking. Bat is also available on GitHub. Um, they have a few examples here, even Git integration. It'll show you what files you've changed and uh, what parts you've added to it. You can have it do non-printable characters. I didn't really like that. I found it kind of busy. Uh, and installation is really simple on Arch, you know, it's Pac-Man and then on Mac OS, it's brew install. Okay. But I don't want to type bat every time. Of course, that's annoying. I'd rather be able to just type cat. So I'm going to edit my, uh, ZSHRC file. There we are. I'm going to put an alias in there. So cat is bat. And now if I cat, uh, steal password. Great, looked beautiful. And I can always use backslash cat if I really want that. So one thing that might not be obvious is that if you're using bat, you wanna be able to use it in a pipe. So for example, if I do bat steal password.sh, fine, but I wanna be able to grep that. How can I grep this if I have the, the name of the file and all these line numbers in here? Um, but you'll see that it just works because bat is able to tell when it's actually being executed and which behavior it should have. So here it falls back to the basic cat behavior. So yeah, it's pretty cool having all these colors in my terminal, makes things look fun. It's fun in screencasts, but uh, I really do want to stress that this is actually super useful. Staring at a monitor for six, maybe eight hours a day. Uh, it can, it can get pretty exhausting if the colors aren't helping you out. Just as an example here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make this video black and white. If, if this video is now black and white, my editing skills are, are pretty great. Uh, and now you can see it's actually a lot harder to read things, right? So if I go into my calculator, for you who's watching this in black and white, it's pretty hard to actually tell what's happening here. For me, it's still easy because I'm not in black and white. That's how editing works. It's pretty amazing. Okay, hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much.